the champions, not chumps. And that's why when I teach you, I'm teaching priests and kings. Yeah. <laughs> We're king, he's the king. Okay. Okay. Yes. I'm going to preach today having the heart of a champion. Having the heart of a champion. Having a heart of a champion don't mean everything, your surrounding, everything is favorable. But you know you got a winner on the inside. Yeah. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, keep your seats rerunning. Have you enjoyed Jesus? Yeah. yeah. And you guys who was here at Bible class Wednesday, was it off the chain? Each other. Yeah. <coughs> you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. But you got to learn to be faithful, available, and teachable. It's who I'm walking with getting me closer to God or far from him. Come on. Paul said, I will let nothing separate me, Pastor, from the love of God. Some of you land stuff draw you away. I remember when I looked up, I used to see y'all faithful. Now you come when you want to. Something don't take the place of your love for God. But I come to announce, not to down you, but to say return unto your first love. You loving anybody better than God, you need to quit them. I'm trying to help, help you to have a heart of a champion. Amen. Now we can't help your work hours, but if you go and ask for time, when it's God's time. That's why you got more a month than money. Are y'all right? But God want to be number one, and, and he has placed in you a champion. And my job is to push you into that, that not pamper you. You want to be pampered, it's a whole lot of churches you could go to. But I'm going to push you into your destiny because I'm so glad where God took me from and took me to. And I don't want to be there alone. I want you to go with me. Are you all right? See, a leader leads you into what God wants you. Yeah. It's up to you to follow. Yeah. All right? Yeah. What's the name of the message? Yeah. I am the heart of a champion. Look at your name and say, are you a champion? Are you a champion? Or are you a chump? Are you a chump? You're a chump, step back. You're a chump, step back. <laughs> are we champion? <laughs> are we champion? champion. <laughs> I want to let you know, uh, Texas Rangers, we are praying for you. <laughs> I know you're hurting at this time. <laughs> All sincerity, we, we, we are praying for you. <laughs> Cardinals, we loving you, baby. Yeah. And we want to say to Pujols, you just keep on praising God every time you hit them home runs. And St. Louis, you come up with the money to pay him. This is a, this is a commercial from TRC, Team TRC. Pay him and we will come. Okay. I'm not going to preach about the courtless today, but we just, you know, we identify with champions. Because we, we worship a winner. We worship a win winner. Jesus Christ. And see, because it looks like you're losing, don't mean you lose. Amen. Let's go to 
1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, let's I hold you. Quite a What that dude back there was cheering for Texas. Look at him. Put that hand up. You put the right hand up, you did it too. Yeah, there is a second. <laughs> <laughs> Champion means you're number one, first place, winner. Amen. Let's look at uh, 1 Samuel, uh, keep your seat, verse uh, chapter 17, David, verse 1. Amen. We're going to just walk down here. You, you, you mind if I do some teaching today, uh, give you some insight of, of, of the heart of a champion? Because everybody got a mic, don't have a heart of a champion. Amen. Having a mic don't make you a heart of a champion. It's who, you, what you going through, and who you yet trusting in. Amen. Amen. Watch this, David. Read. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. Uh huh. And were gathered together at Shoka. Which in, in order to be a champion, there must be a battle. <laughs> there must be an opposing team. Read. Which belongeth to Judah, uh -huh. and pitched between Shoko and Azekah and Ephraim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Uh -huh. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. That reminds me of in grade school, we used to pick people who was going to fight against other people, and we'll go to one uh, side of the school and the other side, and then we, we say, charge! We run and just throw a bang. <laughs> so that's how Israel and the Philistine, they was on one side, and what separated them was a valley, but they was going to get busy. Read. And they went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath uh -huh. of God. The Bible called Goliath, a champion. Did y'all see that? Now he was opposed Israel, God's chosen, but he was the Philistine, uncircumcised champion. Mm. Mm. Well, girl, don't worry about the devil. He ain't got no power. That's a lot. He do have power. But great is he that liveth. The champion is on the inside of you. Yes. Read. Whose height was six cubits and a span. Woo. Some people say about he about nine feet, something like that. Care less, he was big. Say big. big. Read. And he had a helmet of brass uh -huh. upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bread. Uh -huh. And he had grains of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. He was a sight. Huh? Watch this, read. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. Go down to verse 10. And the Philistines say, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Okay, go back to 9, David, read. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him... See, he's the, he's the champ of the Philistine. And he said, whoever y'all bring against me, and he be able to take me out, we'll serve y'all. But if I whoop whoever, because he just, he was a child. He used to win it. Why when we ask the people of God go into a battle, we don't realize we, we fight from a winning stand. We fight from a winning position. But this Philistine champion realized, yeah, send out whoever you want to. I'm going to take him out. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Only reason he's saying all this, he already made up in his mind he's going to win. 
Sound like Texas Rangers or something. <laughs> Read. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Uh huh. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now David was the son of... That's the first thing the enemy want to put on you when you have a battle. He want to put fear. He want to put fear. So we got to say, God, you didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I don't like this opposing force and coming up against me, but I'm going to trust in you, God. That's how you get rid of that fear. You st stop thinking it's about you, but it's who I'm trusting in. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver us out of them all. These are the type of things we got to have in us when we go into battles. This Philistine champion, Goliath, giant, had all this stuff in him, but he didn't have the right God. Really? Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Jew. Now David's still a young man. Read. Whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. And the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And then so he was picking out Saul, three oldest sons. I mean, I'm sorry, Jesse, three oldest sons. Watch this, read. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. Uh-huh. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, the next unto him, Abinadab, and the third, Shema. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. Uh-huh. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Let me tell you something. It wasn't about age. It wasn't about the oldest. It was a, it's about what was in David. What listen, you could be 80 years old and don't sometimes have the experience of a young person. Oh, how can that be? Well, they experience much more. I'm talking about the depth of their experience. David said, You don't understand. Let me go fight him. He doing all this blowing on Israel. Don't you know that we're God's people? Y'all yeah, yeah. shaking in your boots? You got all this military equipment and armor? And you scared of this giant? They even say, I'm fighting. They got mad. Oh, we know you just coming out here to see and no, they weren't coming out to see. David had the heart of a champion. He said, I go fight. See, because David wasn't going to fight in his own strength. He said, You big old giant, can I paraphrase this? You big old ugly Philistine giant, you come to me with sword and a spear, but I'm coming in the name of the Lord. And so when God equipped you for battle, you can't try to put on somebody else's armor. Saul said, take my armor. David said, no, I haven't been proven by this. David said, just give me five spoon rocks and a slingshot. God. I'm going in the name of the Lord. Can I talk to you? When the giant seen David, he got mad. Why are y'all sending this little youngster out to battle with me? See, that's how it is when you pack in power. Folks don't understand. Listen. How is they so effective at Team TRC? I'm better than them. I can preach them, I can teach them, but you don't carry this anointing like me. David said, you don't understand. I've been tested. When I was watching my daddy's sheep, a bride came. And I killed a bride. With my hands. 
You don't understand my resume, David said. When I was watching my daddy's sheep, a lion came. And I killed the lion because God helped me. You got to go back to your past experience that God brought you out and your past victories that you thought it was all.